Hey everyone, I'm photographer and filmmaker TK North. In this video, I'm gonna help you fully understand the principle of shutter speed and how to get creative by varying your shutter speed for different types of photos. Photography is definitely a combination of both art and science. At the start, this can make it seem pretty intimidating and challenging, but once you understand the basics, it does really offer endless opportunities for you to express your creativity. Shutter speed is the perfect example of this because although it is a technical topic, if you learn how to manipulate your shutter speed, you can achieve anything from a crisp freeze frame photo with street or sports photography to velvety motion filled waterfall shots or even captivating light trails. So starting with the basics, what is shutter speed? Well, it's basically exactly what it sounds like. It's the speed at which the shutter of the camera closes. So a fast shutter speed will give you a shorter exposure, letting in less light to the camera. A slower shutter speed gives you a longer exposure and therefore allows more light to be let in. So shutter speed basically determines how fast or how slow you want that freeze frame to be. A really fast shutter speed is going to give you a really exact time slice of what was happening at that specific time. A fast shutter speed can be anything from one over a hundredth of a second or even faster like one over 250 plus if your subject is moving quite quickly. Whereas a slower shutter speed is going to allow you to shoot in more dimmer situations and is going to give you a little bit more motion blur if there's any movement in your scene. Typically a slow shutter speed can be anywhere from one second or even slower. But again, depends on how fast things are moving in your scene. This allows you to capture things like light trails or the blurring of a subject as they move. So that brings us to the challenges that come with adjusting your shutter speed. So when adjusting shutter speed, we need to consider both light and motion. If you leave the shutter open for a longer period of time, it will let in more light, but it will also start to capture any motion. This can either be a good or bad thing, depending on what you're trying to capture. So remember when your shutter is open longer, anything that moves in the frame during that time will get blurrier. We also need to consider that the longer your shutter speed is, that the more obvious camera shake is going to be. This is why you can't shoot really long exposures handheld because naturally we have a bit of camera shake. If you wanna keep increasing your shutter speed, often then you'll have to move over to a tripod to keep your shot steady. This is what can make shooting in low light conditions a little bit more challenging and really emphasizes the importance of a well lit scene. Setting your shutter speed is crucial when it comes to not missing the moment, especially when it comes to fast moving subjects. Think of things like wildlife photography, photographing children where they're moving quite quickly, or even street photography where subjects can be moving quite quickly. In all these examples, you don't get a second chance if you mess up and your shutter speed is too slow and your photo is all blurry, the moment is gone. That's why a solid understanding of shutter speed is so important to master. One tip is to experiment with your shutter speed in the same conditions before a shoot, so you know exactly what shutter speed is going to work and what's not going to work. Using shutter speed to freeze time. So when you don't want any motion blur, you wanna freeze time, you need a faster shutter speed. This can be anywhere from one over 100, or even faster if your subject is moving more quickly. A good example here, capturing someone moving quite quickly on a bike. By using a faster shutter speed and voiding any motion blur, a fast shutter speed basically gives photographers the almost magical ability to freeze a single moment in time. This is why we need to consider what we're trying to capture. A slower shutter speed can sometimes give the desired effect that we're trying to achieve. This is where you have complete creative control over what you want to capture. And with more practice, understanding different shutter speeds, you will know when and where to use different shutter speeds for different situations and to capture different types of images. 
Capturing Water is another great example of this where you can tell two totally different stories based on your shutter speed. Capturing the ocean, for example, by slowing the shutter speed, you can totally smooth out all the waves and get a really soft, glassy look for the water. Yet a quick shutter speed can really showcase a rippling white cap of a wave or the roughness of a choppy sea. It's these type of decisions that give us creative options as photographers or driven by technical adjustments on the camera. Bringing motion to photos with slow shutter speeds. It's tempting as photographers to always want that clean, tack sharp image, especially when we're starting out. Faster shutter speed will achieve this, making sure everything is sharp, but shots that stop time and remove any motion can sometimes really limit storytelling potential. A good example of this is a panning shot. This can be a tricky technique to master, but it involves using a slower shutter speed to track and move your camera at the same speed as the object. This creates and tells the story of the subject in motion, creating a blurring of the background. This can help tell a story and help capture action that goes beyond a single moment in time, not only helpful, but sometimes necessary in our storytelling. This is particularly true for capturing things like cars in motion, where a faster shutter speed will almost give the illusion that the car looks parked and is not what you want. A slower shutter speed, however, like previously talked about, if you track and follow the car through the frame, the car is going to have a little bit of blur, but the background is also going to be totally blurred and it's actually going to look like the car is moving. So this can help create a greater sense of the actual reality of the scene. To finish off, how should we choose a shutter speed? The easiest way to ask yourself is what type of photo are you trying to take? The end goal of your photo is essentially going to help determine your shutter speed. Whether you choose to create a real split second snapshot or use a slower shutter speed and capture some movement in your frame, it really opens up so many possibilities when using shutter speed. So usually there's no right or wrong answer when deciding on shutter speed. It ultimately comes down to how you perceive or want to portray that particular moment. Mastering shutter speed really does put that power in your hands. While all this technical knowledge is important, nothing will improve your skills more than getting out there and practicing. All right, that's it from me. Make sure you check out my other Adobe videos looking at things like aperture and focal length. I'm TK North. Thanks so much for watching.